All right, welcome back to Flag and Socks, the podcast, episode 184. Today on the show, they shot Trump. So this whole episode is going to be dedicated to the event itself, what led up to the shooting, how the media incited the shooting before it happened, and how they covered it after it happened. We're also going to be covering some pretty compelling conspiracy theories. We're going to give you guys the full breakdown, and we're going to analyze the new Trump VP pick, J.D. Vance. All this and more, it's Fluggis Talks, the podcast, episode 184, ranked the best new podcast of all time. time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. cool. Fuck the Stocks Podcast featuring Richard Bradley. All right, one for one on the intro. As always, guys, no ad today. We are going to get straight into the show. Okay. It's an important show. We can't do an ad. They tried to kill Trump. They tried to kill Trump. We have a lot to talk about. They tried to make his head explode in 4K live TV. Isn't that weird? And it kind of went the opposite way. Everything happened except for one crucial piece. Yeah. So we're going to get into all that. Before we do, as you guys know, I attempted a seven-day fast that ends today. What happened? Did I do it successfully, or did I quit after three and a half days and order Thai food? Were there Oreos were (laughs) disheveled among the house? What happened? Let me know in the comments what you think happened. And if you want to find out, today in Bonus Land, the Bonus Land episode dropping right now, is going to have all that information. So the results of my seven-day fast attempt will be spoken about in bonus land. If you guys don't feel like waiting for that, we'll talk about it Friday. Okay. So we're talking about it in bonus land today, but if not, Friday we'll be bringing it up. Um, please just sign up for bonus land. It's very important. That's kind of the ad of the day. There you go. All right. Trump's VP pick. We're going to go over that really quick before the shooting. Uh, J.D. Vance. Yeah. He you was know? kind of a favorite, too. Um, when, in terms of the betting and stuff like that, he was top three. No Marco Rubio, no yeah. Doug Burgum, that guy who we really don't know anything about. Exactly. So when it comes to the choices, mm-hmm. Doug Burgum, Nikki Haley, Marco Rubio. Christy Nome, maybe. So like we're happy there. Yeah. Um, but the guy himself, obviously, he had that anti-Trump uh, interview he did. Mm-hmm. So he was like very much an anti-Trump guy in 2016, which a lot of people were. So I am going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think that's what we need to do at this point, you know? Clean slate. He's our guy. Clean slate. If you fuck up, we're going to disavow you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's kind of, you're not really tested until you're really put to the test. And that kind of happens a lot in Trump administrations. Yeah. So we'll see. I think he's a really articulate and smart guy. And he's going to have a debate against Kamala at some point. Mm-hmm. So I think that's an easy dub. He wrote Hillbilly Elegy. Yeah. Which is about the plight of the Rust Belt white man. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's going to he's gonna relate to some Rust Belt voters. He's not my favorite, but we weren't going to get an all-star pick like Tucker or Bannon. That's what obviously. I'm saying. So this could be, um, it could be good. It, he's, could be, it could be good. Let's give him a chance. He's squarely MAGA. He's not a rhino. He's not some like long-term, lifelong Republican. He got into politics after 2016, you know, I think mm-hmm. 2018 maybe. Um, But yeah, even in Trump's statement itself, he said uh, he he will be strongly focused on the people uh, who he fought so brilliantly for, the American workers and farmers in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Minnesota. Need all those states. So we need every fucking one of them. And he's going to be kind of a Rust Belt whisperer. And there was some good news, too, about who works with him and who's around him. Yeah, uh, this quote uh, immediately popped out and struck a chord with me. It said, of Vance's senior staff, the vast majority are men under 40. Almost all are six feet tall, with the notable exception of his chief of staff, Jacob Reese's, um, and a significant percentage of them ingest some form of nicotine on a regular basis. That's not bad. Highest ratio of smokers <laughs> of anybody in the U.S. Senate, he says. Okay. So that's they're, positive. They're ripping darts, zins, nicotine replacements. You know, they're focused is what I would yeah. say. Yeah. And then Patrick Casey had an interesting point, too. This is for the, you know, we're taking kind of a, a nice approach. Clean slate. Let's see what happens. Not going to mention your Indian wife. Yeah. We're not going to mention that picture at the Israel wall. You know, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, But Patrick Casey said, if you're upset that Vance isn't as based and red pilled as you'd like, that's fine. But just consider that the other realistic options, Rubio, Haley, Scott, Burgum, Gnome, and so on, are worse than him 
in most ways, count your blessings. So yep. I agree with that sentiment. And uh, I wonder if the assassination attempt had any impact on if there was a last minute switch, like I can't go with a rhino, you know, they tried to kill me. Yeah. So I'm and wondering. N- Nikki Haley was basically in on it. Remember she kept like not dropping out and was like, oh, I've, I'm going to wait for the uh, yeah. the RNC convention. <laughs> yeah. it's like, what? Why? You have no chance. So there's a totally alternate timeline where the bullet goes through and the RNC is just a shit show. Mitt Romney, Nikki Haley get together and we get blown out and America's never the same. So, yeah. all right. Well, that's enough J.D. Vance coverage. We're going to be talking about it more in bonus land yeah. as well. Um, let's take this opportunity to help us tickle the post, juice the algo, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a comment again, then start yapping about what you want to yap about, and make sure notifications are on, and make sure PO box is full. Every comment equals plus one on Trump's force field strength, so we need it. And then also place your bets as to whether you think I didn't eat any food and only drank black coffee and salt uh, for seven days. Sure. And we'll find out in bonus land. All right, let's get to the event itself, the Trump shooting. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you guys have seen the clip. Yeah, we don't want to focus too much on stuff that's been churning on social media all week. Right? Exactly, but we are going to show you alternate angles, and I am going to show you some things that I found interesting, especially the Secret Service DEI stuff. Mm. Uh, so let's get to the first clip. This is the most compelling thing I saw as to like what actually happened. So here we have Trump giving the speech right before it happened. And you can see that sniper clearly has something in his sights. Mm -hmm. He saw him. He even did a double take where he pops up. Out of his scope. To kind of like make sure he's seeing what he's seeing. And then that's when the fire, uh, the shot was fired. Yeah. So that little hesitation, I think, really, really... Cost him? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If you're Secret Service, I don't know what you're waiting for. Yeah. Is that one of our guys? Oh, like who's that on scrambling on the roof in muted colors? Is it a is it a guy with a telescope bird watching? Yeah. You shoot him. And even if it's not, you go, oh, yeah, well, he had a scope on the roof. And he <laughs> I was, had to shoot him. That was my mistake. <laughs> We're but, Secret Service. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to the bullet itself, look how close it got to Trump. And uh, we're going to play in slow motion in the background the uh, the moment of impact. Uh, it literally, Trump goes like this and just turns his head. As you can see here, he turns his head for like the slightest second, the smallest amount, and that's what made the difference. It would have been blown out brain if he was looking straight. An anti-immigration graphic chart saved Trump's life. Yeah. Plus divine intervention. I don't know what it is, but I, I, it feels yeah. good. It feels serendipitous, you know? Yeah. The immigration. This, exactly. This tells me that God protected Trump. I think there was something. There, this is a miracle. Yeah. In my mind, I'm not even just saying that as a joke. This is a real miracle. I think you guys agree. Uh, Trump was shot at 6, 11 p.m. I'm not trying to abuse scripture here. Okay, please but, don't. I'm not going to. But Ephesians 6, 11 is a very famous verse that a lot of people talk about. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Wow. A little bit of a coincidence. Yeah. Don't, don't people, get too much into the schizo number stuff, but I, I like it. I agree. We get into numerology, and we're going to get to that uh, in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but can you read the breakdown of everything that happened? Yeah, pretty crazy how an assassin was given a free shot at Donald Trump after Biden's debate collapse. But right before Donald Trump announced his his VP pick and was formally nominated as the GOP presidential candidate. It's almost as if the whole thing was engineered not just to eliminate Trump, but to require an entirely new ticket free of any Trump influence whatsoever. And then it just so happened the shooter is the only person in the entire country without any social media or online footprint whatsoever. And the FBI, after whole minutes of effort, just couldn't figure out how to crack his phone. What a series of strange coincidences. Yeah, a lot of coincidences. How do you not have a festo? How do you not have something? You didn't leave a note, no festo, never posted on Reddit. You've seen the guy. He's a Redditor. He's some yeah. sort of greasy Redditor. He just got MK Ultra brain takeover. It's time. Went and did it. Didn't even know what happened. Then it got shot by Secret Service. And then in terms of the relationship between the shooter's capabilities and Secret Service, it's like the less impressive the shooter is, the more incapable Secret Service was at that time then, and like the more damning it is. And we'll we'll get into that later, I guess. I don't want to. Yeah, we're going to get into the shooter's background and all that stuff. We're going to do the aerial view first. Mm -hmm. So this is the building he was on top of. It's about 150 yards from Trump. Yep. Um, And then there's another aerial view that shows the ladder that was set up that the shooter knew about, um, which is pretty interesting. And then the building itself apparently was uh, staging for the local police department. So they were in the building? Or they getting organized? That was their building to set up. 
Should is, we check the roof? <laughs> yeah, which is weird. Um, we'll get into why that's weird. But uh, for a while, the shooter was seen. We have a video here of people pointing to him while Trump's still talking. And there was like over a minute where people knew there was someone sketchy on the roof with what looked like a gun in their hand while Trump's still on stage. You'd think someone would just go, hey, get Trump off. The radio frequency. Yeah, something would happen. Code red. Just they, to be safe. Do they have a code red? They have a word like that? Yeah. Are so we playing it? We're going to play the clip. We were doing this job. I wouldn't even be doing this. I get some beautiful police. Look, they're all pointing. Look, they're all pointing. Yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there. See him? He's laying down. See him? Yeah, he's laying down. What's happening? Uh, yeah, look. There he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that should be here. Dangerous people. It's like the clock. We have criminals. We have people that should be here. Right here. Right on the roof. It's much tougher than it is. It happens. Right on the roof we got. It's, it's like, like 50 seconds. It's like a bad dream. Yeah. You know, where it's like you're trapped right underwater there. and you don't know how to swim or something. One of those dreams. Right there. Oh, no. Why is no move. one listening? Exactly. And then the guy even encountered police. Apparently there was an interview done by um, we're not going to play it. But in the background, you'll see the guy with the Trump hat <laughs> and the fake hair. Yeah. You think he'd take the fake hair off for the interview? The most monumental moment of his life, witnessing an attempted presidential assassination. And he goes, should I take the hat off before I go on with BBC? And he has the Trump 2024 written above the 2020. He crossed it out yeah. himself. He, so he's been wearing that. For five years. Yeah. The funny part about covering anything like this is like any random guy who's at a Trump rally who's kind of given commentary on this kind of could be a show watcher. Oh, yeah. So, you know, take your hat off next time, buddy. I liked it. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, five, year, five years use out of that hat so far. But basically he said, we saw this guy. We yelled at the police. The police were notified that he was there. They knew. They weren't just like, what are you talking about? Um, and then uh, even the police encountered him. Yeah. And then they uh, a cop. It sounds like a cop climbed up the ladder and, and then got the gun, the shooter's gun pointed at him and then retreated. And then the cop retreated, which obviously is a coward move. Something's going on and you didn't do the right thing. But even if you retreated and you were the cop, couldn't you just shoot your gun in the ground next to the building and everyone looks over and then sees the guy? And then it's like, oh, get yeah. him off the stage. Yeah. You know, like, Absolutely. Wouldn't, wouldn't you at least do that? Mm -hmm. Which is weird. Um, and then the Secret Service blamed local police. So yeah. Secret Service blames local police says it was tasked with securing property surrounding the Trump PA rally, which is weird because that usually the Secret Service establishes a perimeter. Yeah. And then outside of that, they give like local PD the job. But this was the only thing of importance in the area. The only threat of like leverage shot angles. Yeah. There weren't that many structures around. This was an extremely small town. So it kind of was an easier security event to do than others. You know? Yeah. I remember we went to a Trump rally once the, uh, in Tampa and it was like next to a stadium mm -hmm. where there were all these vantage points and it kind of got me like nervous a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was like, huh, I hope they're watching. And you yeah. see the, the giant sniper guy walking around. You see a couple of them. Um, and this town was a joke compared to that. It was like, oh, it's just the stage here and then that one building. Yeah. All right. Hey, <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll look up. I'll watch the stage. Mm -hmm. um, and then also what they do a lot of times is they'll put up like flags that are pinned on each corner. Yeah. Because you don't want to do a regular flag that gives away wind because if you're a sniper, you can see that and then adjust your scope or whatever. So they usually do like pinned in four corners flags on each side. So if you're trying to get in a side shot like this guy was, mm -hmm. you can't even see President Trump. You don't even know where he's at. And you don't have wind reference either. Yeah. Operationally so, secure flags. Yeah. So very sketchy. I don't want to get too conspiratorial, but we're going to right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, a lot of times police officers are in the Freemasons. Mm. I will Fraternal say that. Fraternal order. So when that comes to the guy who retreated or the cops that were alerted but didn't do anything and they were the ones who secured the building but didn't let the guy in the roof with the ladder and didn't do anything, it makes you wonder. And then if you look at the event itself, um, the Donald Trump assassination attempt happened exactly three months, three weeks, three days until the election. Crazy. Freemasons like 333. We all know that. <laughs> You know? Yeah. 
So you lose me. I, you're on your own on that one, but I, I get it. I, I get yeah. the evidence. Um, and then our this next guy, apparently a prophet uh, named Brandon Bible. Okay, <laughs> his name's a little on the nose with Let's the see name. where you're going here. Yeah. Um, listen to what he said. This was three months before the uh, the assassination attempt. Listen to what he said. All throughout America, all throughout, and I saw Trump rising up, and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that w- the, this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum eardrum. And I saw um, he was he fell to his knees during this time frame and he started worshiping the Lord. He got radically born again during this time frame. I'm talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope that's true. Yeah. Jeez. But also to play the other side of it. Well, are you refusing to say devil's advocate? I, well, I'm not going to say devil's advocate. The guy doing a Bible prophecy. <laughs> His last name's Bible. That's I'm not going <laughs> to. But to the other side, sometimes the Freemasons will use prophetic people when they know what events are coming that they're going to do themselves. And then they say, oh, this might happen. And then they do it. And then that guy gets a lot of credit. And then also the Freemasons get their squirts for like letting you know ahead of time. Okay. But I don't think that's a situation here because – you can't shoot from 150 yards and say, all right, I'm just going to nick Trump's ear. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Of the course wind, not. he's going like this while he's talking. He's all over the place. It's literally impossible. Someone else died. It was a real gun. It was a real shot. Um, God save Trump. Trump's not in on it. Yeah. And that, and there's some people who also wonder, like, is Trump in on it he, with the Maxine and stuff? He, they think it's all uh, the world is a stage and it's all for entertainment and Trump's part of the bad guys. I don't think Trump's part of the bad guys anymore. Not that I ever did. I probably had like a 2% suspicion. Okay. But now it's completely gone because they wouldn't shoot their guy if that was the plan. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about now what led up to this. Uh, We're going to talk about the media's inciting and stuff. But what led up to this right before? uh, There was a uh, Alex Soros tweet from a while ago. Mm Mm-hmm. Little subtle threat, I guess. Last year, crime and inflation crises largely evaporated, and it's a bullet hole. It's and- a bullet hole, and the n- amount of money in his hand adds up to forty-seven dollars, which is forty-seven, the forty-seventh president. And then the bullet hole is in glass, and then that building they were on top of was a glass manufacturing building. Uh oh. So that's a little weird. And then a couple, like I think a week ago or two weeks ago, uh, Biden told donors on a private call this afternoon, "It's time to put Trump in the bullseye." Yeah. Which is not good. Not very subtle. And then remember, I mean, guys, this is all – they don't like words fight. You know, they, they get upset when the right wing says it, but then they can say put Trump in a bullseye. Yeah. Every little word was a – before January 6th was like a hint or a tip to Dog like whistle. S- storm the Capitol. Yeah. yeah. And then – but put Trump in a bullseye, that's nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then the next thing that led up to this, which is a little weird, why did CNN – cover the event. Trump does a ton of rallies every day. He almost he's doing a rally. Uh, why, CNN doesn't really cover it. They actually try not to cover it. Yeah, they don't want to give him free airtime, right? And then all of a sudden they covered a random rally. Yeah. And like you said, they wanted him to get his brains blown out on TV for everyone. Yeah. And then like from the uh, brains blown out on 4K, it would be everywhere on social media to exactly the opposite where he takes a little bit of a hit, but then gets like the sickest photo ever. What a swing guys. Yeah. What a swing. That's like bigger than a pick six. Yeah. That's as good. That's as a good. lot. That's a pick six, but it's like worth 50 points. Each of them. Exactly. So the iconic fist pump is obviously the photo of the event. That's our guy. That's our boy. He's our fighter. Yeah. Um, and then what, which, which come on, dude, what, what instincts savage, what instincts savage, and then when it comes to that's why I'm going to vote for him twice. Yeah, that's Three why I'm times. harvesting ballots yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, this time. Um, and then the guy who got the photo, mm-hmm. he's like a what's it called, Pulitzer journalist. Yeah, Pulitzer winning journalist, Pulitzer Prize winner. Look at this. Look at how he ran it down. So there he is. Shots are happening. And he just moves and gets the shot. And look at the photo he got. Banger. Um, so that was great. And then uh, to wrap up this little part, the Secret Service has no plans to beef up security at RNC after Trump assassination attempt. We are confident in the plans we have. That seems fair. Yeah, which takes us to our next point, the Secret Service and their DEI policies. They're on some bad shit. Yes. And then keep in mind, leading up to this, Democrats started trying to strip Trump's Secret Service uh, protections just months before the shooting. 
multiple yeah. times. Uh, congressmen like introduced bills. They Remember, were talking yeah. about it on CNN. Like now that he's a convicted felon, can we execute this guy basically by exactly. omission? There was that thing where it's like, oh, we don't want to give secret service to convicted felons, knowing that they're going to convict him of being a felon like a couple weeks later. And this could have been a long game situation. Of course. Or just got kind of botched because Trump's sentencing got delayed. Yeah. So they're going to put him in jail. They were trying. Um, and then Trump's team even requested uh, additional Secret Service, and Mayorkas denied it. Mayorkas denied repeated requests for more Secret Service protection for Trump, GOP lawmaker says. So that's interesting. Yeah. And then uh, when it comes to the Secret Service's response, mm -hmm. the first thing I noticed when I watched it, uh, I was watching it in the other room. Um, well, actually, I was watching a movie. Mm. And then – I finished the movie. I was watching Adjustment Bureau. Wasted your time. And I finished the movie, and then I went to this the kitchen, and then Rap Boy was like, "Oh, they shot Trump." I tried to tell you, and I was like, well, "You didn't. You didn't text. You didn't yell at me. You didn't come in the room." Do you want to tell the full story? Because <laughs> I yelled at you, and you I just know, didn't were hear you it. Occupied I with anything? Or I guess I didn't. Was something hear else it. going on? I guess I didn't hear it. Oh, but God. usually, when Trump gets uh, assassinated and gets shot, please tell me mm -hmm. and just go knock on the door or whatever I'm doing. Um, yes. So the first reaction when I saw the event play out, why are there so many women around? A lot why, of, why are there three ladies getting him into the car? Why is a girl with their hair in a bun getting him into a car? What's Deb doing there? What is Deb doing there? And this is the answer. Can you read the explanation? Uh, there's a petition circulating inside the U.S. Secret Service that flags concerns about a number of recent Secret Service incidents indicative of inadequate training, uh, a double standard in disciplinary actions, and a vulnerability to potential insider threats that could pose a risk to U.S. NATSEC. It was first shared Monday, I'm told, and has 39 signatures so far. Aim is to call for a congressional investigation, petition says. And the, so basically, the Secret Service is literally doing DEI. Yeah. And we, it's on their website. It mm -hmm. says DEI. And then can you read what the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Accessibility Program is? The United States Secret Service is dedicated to maintaining an environment that is free from all forms of discrimination, harassment, or retaliation f uh, for engaging in protected activity. This assurance extends to all employees, former employees, contracts, yada, yada. Uh, regardless of their race, color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, national origin, age, disability, protected genetic information, sexual orientation, marital status. Blah, blah, blah. Sexual harassment, all that. So they're really just trying to get all the freaks in. Yeah. And uh, I, I believe we're going to talk about it in a little bit. There's quotas. Yeah. The head of the Secret Service is a woman. Yeah, that's our next clip, the director. Check out this clip from the director of the Secret Service um, and the quota they're trying to do. To expand hiring, they're aiming to have 30% women recruits by 2030 and even allowed YouTube influencer Michelle Carey to train with agents. But I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women. That workforce will be pivotal for the 2024 campaign season. Which for the first yeah, it will particularly women. What does that mean? Why? Why do you need a lady in like a war scenario? And then a lot of people are making the point, like a woman being Trump's body man, you can't even block him. You can't eclipse him. We need goons who are willing to eat bullets, not women who are crouching down and kind of like not even big enough to protect his head from the beginning. Right? Exactly. They're reaching up. Yeah. And then uh, the woman uh, who was talking there, the director is Kimberly Cheadle. She used to work at Pepsi. Yeah. So she's not even like a security person background. Well, security at Pepsi uh, served wow. as a senior director in global security at PepsiCo, where she was responsible for guarding the Cheetos. <laughs> stopping. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, you know, it's not like some hardened, lifelong secret service guy who's seen three attempts and gone through it. It's not like that Clint Eastwood movie where he's the secret service guy and he falls in love with the woman. It's not a sick movie. It's, it's just not. some lady from Pepsi. It's actually a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> And then here's an example of some of the DEI stuff the Secret Service is doing. Yeah. Secret Service has affirmative action programs for women, LGBT, indigenous nations, and persons with disabilities. Let's get a wheelchair guy in the Secret Let's Service. Let's get some wheelchair guy. He can't even close the door. Well, what happened, man? And then the, what's the end of that say? It says, uh, is the president safer when he's protected by strong non-binary Latinx women with an X? I don't think so. 
Yeah. Um, exactly. And not only that, but to get the diversity that there are the, this random quota, 30%, which I don't know, from the sky, where did it come from? Where's the directive, right? Why is that good? Did anybody ever explain that? But uh, in order to get the quota, it says female trainees in the Secret Service are held to lower physical standards than male trainees. All applicants to the Secret Service must pass a physical test that includes four elements, push-ups, sit-ups, chin-ups, and a 1.5-mile run. Yeah, so here's a chart that John Doyle posted, and the males obviously are the blue distribution, the pink is the women. You need the best of the best of the men. Yeah. Once you put that line for where the best of the best are, there's literally no women in that area. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. And then not only that, but when you're talking about like DEI and you're talking about uh, filling a quota or something, it's not just like you have an average employee and then you pick someone who's like here, like a woman who's a little bit under it. And you're like, close enough, right? Because you're doing a one for one swap. Those yeah. three women we saw are taking three places of people who could be here on the average, you know? Mm -hmm. There's like an opportunity cost for switching out someone who's kind of like gonna be a DEI 30% quota for what? I don't know, to make people feel good? Make the woman who got the job after PepsiCo feel good or something? Yeah, exactly. It, but so like there's an opportunity, it's a swing. It's more than just like, oh, that they should be good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like a swing. There's some military operator who's wanted this job for a long time who's like dead serious, benches reps 220. Mm -hmm. bounces it off his chest. Exactly. And then now they give it to Deb and she's crouching behind the- uh, Because most of the time nothing happens. Yeah. So now you're a badass girl and they give you a Glock and you wear your sunglasses and you're a badass. But then let's- Yeah, see I forgot in the bathroom one time. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a big deal. But let's see what happens when Deb is put in the most stressful situation in like recent history. Literally the eat a bullet scenario. And here's Put she, your body in and eat a bullet scenario. And here's what it looks like. Here's her crouching and mm, hiding. So it's all, I'm a badass girl until the bullets start. And then I'm just a girl. Oh, what am I doing here? And then if you heard the audio from the shooting, female agent, what are we doing? What are we doing? Where are we going? What are we doing? And then here's a clip of her struggling to put her gun away once Trump's in the truck. Yeah, better holster the weapon. Nope, better give up. I don't know. Better keep it out, maybe. That was embarrassing. And then there's three there's women three right there. There's three women right outside the Beast. Or whatever, the SUV, it's not the Beast. I don't, I don't understand. So they're not really built for high-stress situations like this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're a boss babe and 30% of the Secret Service, and then something actually happens, and look what happens. I, it's not even about being, like, mean about this or, like, being right. It's just about give me the best person for the job. And then every time the best person for a job is a man. Mm -hmm. I know that, right? Yeah. There's not some super movie star type person out there. It's just like a 6'3 man yeah. who's been in the military and who has like this history with the upper body strength that uh, you don't need to change the, the requirements to get in for. It's just so stupid. And uh, – there was reports of one female uh, Secret Service agent who failed a situational judgment course, ability to separate gunmen from innocent civilians. And then uh, the director, Kimberly Cheadle, authorized her graduation anyway in order to fulfill the girl quota. It's like, why'd you do that? It's more important. The, yeah, the passing the test is less important than the quota. And then there's just this certain thing, like we've been talking about it with uh, uh, over the course of the show with airlines there's certain things where DEI, you know, the marketing job, mm. go ahead, you go ahead. If you're going to do DEI, go ahead. It's your company, right? But the life or death, the 175 souls on board. Yeah, the pilots, pre the president police, of secret service. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's getting crazy. Why don't you go be an indoor skydiving instructor? Yeah. Something you, low you, stakes. You can DEI that, and then worst comes to worst, someone gets fucked up you a little bit. You break an arm. You don't yeah. fucking die. <laughs> Um, can you read the uh, text from a sniper Benny Johnson posted? Yeah, text from a professional sniper. This guy's a pro, 20 years of military service, trained with the Secret Service, currently active duty. The quote is, I have no fucking clue what they are doing. I'm still trying to wrap my head around a building being 150 yards away that was outside the security perimeter and had rooftop access. I've trained with and completed against the SS snipers, and they are the fastest and most accurate shooters I've ever seen. So ringing endorsement there. Uh, the fact that they let this happen makes zero sense. So. But do not worry. The FBI is going to look into this. Yeah. 
So <laughs> Cat Turd posted that picture. Yeah. Who's that again? Uh, I don't know. I forget, it, I forget, I forget his name. Too, the head of the FBI. Yeah. You know? Great. The FBI's into it. And then a uh, little weasel who like lied about Trump and was having an affair. And he did that face. And he had a smug demon. in front of Congress. And he had a demon in him. Yeah. And then uh, can you read this FBI Pittsburgh field office? Yeah. Uh, the FBI Pittsburgh field office leading the investigation into the bloody assassination attempt on President Trump also originally led the investigation of Hunter Biden's shady business dealings and was also involved in the probe of Jim Biden's shady AmeriCorps deal. So, you well, know. I hope they find something. Uh, yeah. I wonder what they're going to find. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's go to our last thing about the FBI. Um, remember there was that uh, shooting back in the day in Texas Yeah, where the FBI agent uh, brought the guy to the place? Yeah. Dropped him off, the undercover FBI agent, and said, tear up Texas. In Garland, Texas. Yeah. Um, the, Cernovich was bringing this up. He said, tear up Texas is what an FBI agent told a terrorist when dropping him off to murder attendees of a freedom of speech event. 50 people almost killed. We only know this as the agent got pulled over by fast responding police. Nothing ever happened to the agent. That's weird. So that's who, you know, that's who's investigating. That's what the FBI is. I'm sure days. they'll come up with some clean answers. And you know what? It's the funny thing is this is when it turns into like a movie. You know, uh, uh, this really is like a presidential assassination attempt. And then like the one agent who's like pulling a thread and is like, look, I really did find this. And then he he realizes his superior is kind of working against him or like, oh, oh okay, you, I'll yeah. take that. What did you find? That's nothing. Yeah. And then boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So if you see any FBI agents turn up dead in that field office recently, there's some real shady shit going down. That's a good call. That's probably what's coming next. But yeah, and it's not about the rank and file of the FBI that we're talking about. But if a few politically motivated higher ups in the FBI are like the investigation rolls up to them and they have a motive or they have, you know, something they don't want coming out. What are we supposed to do? Yeah, we've seen this before a million times. Um, all right, let's go to our next topic on this uh, same subject, the media uh, inciting this, yeah. uh, the violent rhetoric that led up to it. We have like a compilation here. We'll play like a minute of it. Be ready to throw a punch. Well, you have to be ready to throw a punch. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. That I thought he should have punched him in the face. I feel like punching him. I think I'd like to take him behind the gym if I were in high school. If we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. No, I wish we were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take him out now. Okay. When was the last time... An actor assassinated a president. They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Please, get up in the face of some Congress people. People will do what they do. I want to tell you, Lord Dutch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. We're going to go in there. We're going to. Yeah. A whole lot of that. A lot of rhetoric leading up to it. And then obviously uh, we have playing in the background just like a montage of all the times they've called Trump Hitler. Yeah. And all the like the allusions to Hitler they've made with him. So they convinced society that Trump's a threat to democracy. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, Hillary Clinton. Um... Robert De Niro have all called him Hitler or Mussolini or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, isn't like one of those long time memes. It's like, oh, if you could you go back in time and kill baby Hitler. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you constantly call a guy Hitler. You're constantly speaking in hyperbole. And then there's this kid who the shooter is was 12 years old in 2016. Yes. So he's 12 years old in 2016. His mind is just starting to form. He's just graduating from like SpongeBob SquarePants to the real world. And now he constantly sees Trump, Hitler, media. It's the worst thing ever, you know, constant yeah. demonization of a guy. And then your brain never fully formed in a rational world. It, it formed in a hyperbolic, crazy world. And all of a sudden, exactly. I don't know, you're up on, you're up getting your head blown off after missing a shot. Yeah. So, and you're done. There's no coming back. You don't have a second chance. Definitely radicalized. And even Tucker was saying, there's an article, remember back in the day, Tucker Carlson Stokes Conspiracies claims the U.S. is speeding towards assassination of Trump. Yeah. He said that like over a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And obviously he was proven right. Um, we do have some background info on the shooter himself. Mm -hmm. um, can you play the clip of his friends talking about him or the people in his school talking about him? 
I didn't have any interaction with him, but he was a, like a kid that was always alone. He was always bullied uh, every day. He was just an outcast. Uh, yeah. I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so they're going to see someone like that, and they're going to target him because they think it's funny or whatever. So Yeah, so he was fucked up. He was, he was one of those kids. You and know? the kid goes on to say that he wore a mask long after COVID was over. Oh, that's not a good sign. I know. And so. also, he tried to be in the shooting club in school, but then was kicked out or was not allowed to join because he was so bad. Yeah, would-be assassin tried to join a high school shooting club, was rejected for being comically bad. And I think there were rows of uh, target practice, like seven lanes, and he was on the far right side. And then he hit the far left wall. So he shot all the way across, like, four alleys of target practice or seven you're not in the club anymore. He botched it. And then he made inappropriate jokes and shit. And so uh, school shooter physiognomy as well in terms of this guy's face and body yes. and kind of social outcast-ish. Definitely. If if it was something conspiratorial, uh, they definitely picked the right fall guy. Yeah. But, I mean, he kind of looks or the Or the part. right brainwash guy or mind control guy. <laughs> we all know these types from high school. Yeah, the for sure. The weird loner kids who are a little a little on the tism side, maybe. Yeah, kind of trend towards ROTC or something, maybe. I don't really they know. They don't go outside. They're on the computer a lot. They don't have a lot of friends. It's sad. Yeah. Like, these types definitely exist. Uh, the, the physiognomy of the guy was kind of analyzed by someone on TikTok. How attractive is the man who attempted to assassinate Donald Trump? His face is overly long, his cheekbones are low set, and his facial thirds are unbalanced. His chin is too long, his jaw is narrow, and his jaw angle is too acute. He has a class 3 malocclusion and a recessed maxilla, which leads to a concave side profile and an underbite. At least he has a long ramus and an acute gonial angle. His mid-face is highly feminized, his eyes are more than one eye apart, and his lips are thin and unproportionate. His nose is too broad and poorly shaped. His eyebrows are extremely thin and poorly shaped, and his skin texture is poor. He is a 3 out of 10 facially, with 31% facial harmony, which is a highly mm. unattractive face. It's good to put some math to that eyeball test where you're like, yeah, he looks fucked up. Yeah. So it's good to so, have some he's sort He's of ugly. Test. That probably played into it. Yeah. Allegedly, this was his window. Allegedly as well. This is from Google Maps, I believe, of his address. A window that says protect trans kids. So he's on some dumb shit like that, if that's true. If that's true. And then here's where it gets a little interesting. He was in a BlackRock ad. Yeah. There he is. Yep, there he is right there. He was just a student in the class. Nothing significant. But yeah. he was in a BlackRock ad. I don't think that... Personally, I don't think that means anything. I don't I, think so either. Yeah, okay. Unless that's when they gave him the... The sleeper agent messages. That's when they gassed him and they and sleeper then, agent him, gave him the activation code word. Activation code word. But can you read um, this uh, breakdown of why he's a perfect patsy? From Ian Carroll, who is a conspiratorial minded guy, mind you. Um, As am I. Yeah. Uh, he says this guy has all the hallmarks, all the marks of a classic patsy play. Mentally unstable, young, impressionable loner. High school classmates say he has an atrocious shot, got rejected from school gun club. Evidence that the way was laid for him to get onto that roof, ladder, lack of Secret Service coverage, etc. A million questions about Secret Service incompetence that sound an awful lot like sabotage from the inside. We don't know what happened yet, but think back to JFK. They sold the story of a lone gunman, when in fact the true story was very likely an extremely complex orchestrated operation with multiple shooters and multiple layers of obfuscation after the fact. There is no reason not to assume this is a similar event. The odds are so wildly against this kid pulling this all off uh, on his own with no assistance or involvement at this point. And if there was any involvement, that implies it was likely a full-on op by someone. So think about it. Based on the evidence at this point, is it more likely this kid managed to do all this on his own or that any of the shadowy forces in this world were willing to plan an op and pick out a patsy? Regardless of what you conclude, we don't know the answers yet. Keep your mind open. Don't fuel hatred and division. Be kind to people. Yeah. And that goes back to the point where the more in case this kid's a loner, bad shooter, just local kid from Pennsylvania, 
and it's like the the more degraded his credibility is, then the worse the Secret Service looks as a result of that. And so, like, it's like a miracle for him to pull this off. Exactly. Oh, there's a ladder. Oh, no one's shooting me. Oh, there's Trump right there. Exactly. So, like, one of those things has to give. Either it was a really bad bot job by Secret Service, or this kid was like better than they thought, or he had help, or something happened, right? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, his face is all schlopped off. He's fucked up. He's dead now. We will never know. Yeah. So that's that's a good patsy if he was a patsy. The FBI yeah. has his phone though. Yeah, you eat the bullets if you're a good patsy. Yeah, that's a good point. And then I don't know if this really helps or not, but we um, we made the shooter of different race. So yeah. here's him if he was black. And here's him if he was Chinese. And here's him if he was Chinese. So in case that helps. Yeah. <laughs> it's still an ongoing he's, investigation. He's fucked up either way, I think. All right, let's get... This is the most... Uh, not the most troubling part, because the most troubling part was when they shot Trump. Yeah. But the media's response to it was very telling. Uh, Biden had like multiple press conferences. Here's uh, some highlights from him. This is from his Oval Office address the full 36 hours after it happened. There's the issues, the agenda, the vision for America. But in America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. (laughs) At the battle box. The battle box sounds worse than an assassination attempt. <laughs> yes. That sounds like two men enter, one man leaves. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and then there's someone memed it. In America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. You know, that's how we do it, at the battle box, not with bullets. Yeah, dude. Um, he did it twice. He didn't even realize it. Ballot box. Yes. You know, it was... Ballot box twice. And if you watched that Oval Office address, Biden goes, you know, we got to cool the temperature down on political, you know, violence or rhetoric or whatever. And he goes, you know, like Governor Whitmer and January 6th. And he mentions all these right wing Republican things. That's like FBI op January 6th. Like some a couple people got out of line a little bit. FBI op as well. FBI op as well. <laughs> And so it's just crazy to me that uh, these people could be so on the gas pedal for so long, trying to literally put Trump in jail. He he had the nomination in their full gas pedal, trying to put him in jail. And then they go, whoa, we need to cool it. Got to cool it in their rhetoric. We don't then, want anyone yeah. to retaliate. So if January 6th was an attack on democracy, with this Trump shooting, obviously, I don't want to hear about January 6th anymore. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Biden also failed to call it an assassination attempt right after. Yeah, this was immediately after. That was the last battle box thing we saw was after days of preparation, just to yeah. say battle box. <laughs> this was the night of. So do you think this was an assassination attempt? I don't know enough. To, I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So. Mm. And then, and everybody was saying that too. He doesn't have enough facts. And then everyone's saying we're wondering what the shooter's motive was. I'm saying I, I think he, I think he didn't like Trump. Yeah, I think he was trying to kill him. I think he was trying to make Trump's head explode on he TV. Tried to shoot Trump in the head. Yes. Wow. <laughs> nicked him in the ear. What is he trying to? He doesn't want Trump to hear think, stuff. Well, what's he saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does he what does want him mean? to get an ear piercing? What's his motive? Yeah. You want to pierce Trump's ear for him? And then uh, when Trump, when Biden walked away, look at uh, people are saying he has a little bit of a Parkinson's walk because he. He dangles his wrist like Mr. Burns. Look at his right wrist. Dude, this guy is a fucking... Little T-Rex action. People are saying that that is a uh, Parkinson's effect, and then Mr. Burns has that too. Yeah. Which is interesting. All right, now we're going to cover the headlines from right after, basically all the way through. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a speed round and lots of reading by Richard Rapoy, but we're going to go through like 10 headlines here. Yeah. Secret Service rushes Trump off stage. I want to preface this before we go through the speed run that the same media whose rhetoric was calling Trump Hitler, calling him a Nazi, a total threat to democracy, all those things that we say led up to radicalizing someone like this is the same exact media that they showed after the event happened. So it's not like they learned anything and turned face and kind of changed what they were doing. The same hyperbolic, Mm -hmm. never give Trump positive slant media coverage, uh, it showed during these headlines. Secret Service rushes Trump off stage after he falls at rally. Oh, wow, he fell? fell. Uh, ABC's Stephanopoulos uh, Raditz blamed Trump for contributing to violent rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Trump's fault. Uh, victim blaming. Don't uh, yeah. don't leftists really hate that or something? Uh, Secret Service. This is from NBC. Secret Service rushes Trump off stage after popping noises heard at his Pennsylvania rally. 
What could those popping noises be? Yeah. And then here's CNN's coverage of it happening. Donald Trump and the people around him perceive themselves to be under threat. And that's all that matters. That is that is not legitimate. That is wrong. Um, you hear the screams from the audience. You're people, fired, right? That's not legitimate. That's not wrong. Wow. Or that's wrong. Wow, that's crazy because one of them died, mm. which we're going to cover soon. And uh, Trump almost got his head blown off. Yeah. Uh, here's next. another one. Trump's speech interrupted by Secret Service. Yeah, Secret Service. They, yeah, Trump's he, speech interrupted by Secret Service. They didn't like his talking points on migrants. Secret Service had to jump in. And it was all the women, too. Yeah. Uh, and then wh- who is this? This was uh, a news post sent out to news stations about this? Immediately- to new- yeah, this is immediately after the event. This is what was sent out to a lot of uh, local news stations, which are oftentimes, in these cases, owned by the ones that own the big news stations. Yeah, so it says, Trump rally story. Hello, reminder to stick to facts. Don't speculate, editorialize, sensationalize, or jump to conclusions when reporting on the Trump rally incident today. Don't call it assassination attempt unless authorities say it is. Don't say a shooting targeting Trump or the rally unless authorities confirm that connection. Clarify if it's actually gunshots. That's unclear at the moment. If authorities don't know, then it's okay to say that. Anchors, be mindful of body language when presenting the story. No need for serious face or adding comments and adjectives for color. No need to say scary moments today. And it goes on and on. No need to say scary moment today at Trump rally. It wasn't scary. They give orders down to body language. They shot him. He was bleeding. Yeah. He missed it by half an inch. Um, and then the Atlantic had an article: "The gunman in the would-be dictator violence." Violence. Uh, can you read it? Yeah. Violence stalks the president who has rejoiced in violence to others. Mm. When? What is Trump's? When? These people, and I obviously would never endorse it, but these people, the media. Mm-hmm. You know, they say you really don't hate the media enough. Oh yeah. I say that. It's like you guys are radicalizing the left against the right, but you're also radicalizing the right against you. Yeah, you don't have like the control over the other side of it. You know, you're like talking to your friend, but then other people are overhearing it. And you're like, what the fuck did he say? Yeah. And they're not as friendly to you. Yeah. Uh, Here's from the Washington Post. Trump escorted away after loud noises at PA rally. And then um, Trump hurt. This is New York Times. Trump hurt but safe after a shooting. A shooting. A shooting. A shooting. Which is similar to the next story. And they cropped the American flag out of that picture. Sniper shot at former President Donald Trump from 130 yards away on roof of manufacturing plant. Shot at. Wow. They shot him. They they shot him. So let's go to the next. I want to say there was one thing that when I watched the tape, I found odd uh, because of all of the heated rhetoric. And that is that after he was hit, uh, former President Trump got up and said, fight, fight, fight. I think what we're hearing from people is that's not the message that we want to be sending right now. We want to tamp Mm. it down. That's the problem. Can't say fight after an attempt on your life. When you're bleeding and you got shot with a gun, you can't say fight, fight, fight. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot of people are saying um, CBS News said the biggest threat right now is retaliatory violence. That's so, the biggest threat. Again, man, this is the same media who kind of stirs the shit and then they give you the exact polar opposite wrong take after it. Mm-hmm. it it's so crazy. Like they don't learn lessons in between major events or do any self-reflecting. It's just more poo. Mm-hmm. They just continue to poo at you. Yep, and then Dash Dubrovsky, a pet of ours. This was from a few days before. From a few days before. But Dash goes, I've never seen the media work so hard to remove a democratically elected president from the presidential ballot in my entire life. What we're seeing is the most politically biased, non-factual, untrustworthy reporting this country's ever seen. And that was about Joe Biden and his declining mental health. So that was the worst treatment from the media of a president he's ever seen. And Medic Sisyphus replied, never? His memory is like a goldfish. It's two seconds long. He can only remember one week at a time. So Unreal. Yeah. So uh, that, that's yeah. it. I, I, they, they get so deep in this delusion and their like own narrative that they can't even picture like, how's this going to sound to someone who doesn't think exactly like me? Mm-hmm. Right? So like that's kind of the uh, – how does this sound to someone who's neutral who's going to overhear this? Right? Mm-hmm. And if you're a normal guy, you go, you're insane. You know, Dash, you're insane. CNN, you're insane. NBC News. And then Jack Black was doing a show in Canada, and it was his birthday, and here's his birthday wish.
don't miss Trump next time. <laughs> mm, don't miss Trump next time. That's Jack Black's friend, right? Yeah, That's from him. his band. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know what? Let's just take a moment here. We don't have the assets for it, but Libs of TikTok. Have mm. you been seeing her Twitter profile? She's been screenshotting a lot of people celebrating or saying, oh, damn, shouldn't have missed. And a lot, she's collecting many scalps. Good. People are getting absolutely fired for it. Firefighters, people with good jobs like teachers, people are getting scalped for it. So, you know, I don't I don't get it. I don't get mm. that kind of mentality. Right. Yeah. And then Morning Joe, who's a literal Muppet, he didn't even go on the air um, after the event. This Today, week. Monday, Monday morning, because he's on uh, weekdays only. And it said, it's a huge day in politics, and MSNBC has pulled Morning Joe off the air. They're apparently worried the Morning Joe crew might say something inappropriate about the Trump assassination attempt from CNN. So yeah. literally, like, they have to hold him back because this guy is going to say something retarded. They know he's just going to go, well, I understand both sides of it. <laughs> and like and I was editing clips for this episode beforehand, the, the media, like, the hate reel. And uh, Morning Joe was calling him Mussolini, Hitler type, and mm -hmm. he's done that a million times. Morning Joe, he was the one who said, uh, we know Trump used to have Hitler speeches by his bed at night. Yeah. It's like, we know that? What are you talking about, Joe? You're going to radicalize people, Morning Joe. Yeah, and not in the way you want to. That's, that's the thing. I, I think that's a great point that you've said is when you're trying to radicalize someone with kind of like sketchy information or hyperbole or exaggerations, there's a mirror effect to a different demographic of person who's paying attention. And in like in one sense, morning Joe types are going to radicalize the fat woman from law school. Yeah, the wine mom who's on Valium. She's really susceptible. And she has cats and she hates Trump and she goes to the Pride Parade. She reads the New York Times bestseller book. Mm -hmm. She does the Oprah reading list. She loves list. Obama. But yeah. then you're really going to radicalize the more capable people who like have guns and care about the country. And that's where you're going to get into problems. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, and that's what I'm saying is it's just uh, I I agree with the bring the temperature down on politics, but that's not our job to do. And that's not even the right wing doing it. I can't think of any right wing situations where the temperature got too hot in politics. And you could say January 6th. But then if you look back at the evidence, Trump said peacefully protest, respect law enforcement, don't damage anything, go home. Yeah. And then, you know, so it's like that wasn't even a real one. And then a lot of people that were involved in that were feds and they let everyone in. They kind of let it happen and they didn't have national secure uh, national guard there. Yeah. So it's like our one example of like too hot uh, political climate was like an inside job. It's like, like a honey trap. There's no right wingers who were like, we need to go, you know, get our guns and go do this specific thing. Yeah. You know, so that's literally what they've been doing the whole time. And then Barack Obama, can you read what he said after? There is absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. Although we don't yet know exactly what happened, we should all be relieved that former President Trump wasn't seriously hurt and use this moment to recommit ourselves to civility and respect in our politics. Michelle and I are wishing him a quick recovery. Michelle. Michelle and him. He calls her Michelle. He calls him Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then also right. keep in mind, they they call Trump Hitler. He's a threat to democracy. He's Hitler. He's worse than Hitler. Someone said in a man on the street video. of Yeah. Mine. And then if Hitler got sick, would people be saying, hey, speedy recovery, Hitler? Why are you wishing Hitler to recover? Oh, I'm glad Hitler's OK. Get well soon, Hitler. So either you were full of shit when you were saying that hy hyperbolic rant, like schizo, getting people schizo riled up or you're full of shit now. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. It's not really consistent, you know, exactly. Um, and then there was an article that Forbes deleted. Uh, Will surviving gunfire be Donald Trump's next appeal to black voters? Yeah. Written by Sean Harper. And his little tagline says, I am a diversity, equity, and inclusion expert. Mm. So no skills. So he has no skills. <laughs> yeah. And they deleted your article, buddy. And your article's deleted. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. So that's kind of the event itself. Now we're talking about the victim. Yeah. Um, the victim. There were two victims, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, can you read the John Doyle recap? Which this was the uh, a great summation. Um, it, John Doyle said, "You shoot into a crowd of Trump supporters like in Butler. You hit hardworking men adored by their families. You shoot into a crowd of leftists like in Kenosha. You hit convicted sex offenders and pedophiles. Huh? What are the odds? Right? It's a good point. And so the guy, the man who lost his life uh, at the Trump rally, was identified as Corey Comparatore." Uh, Comparatore, maybe. Comparatore, yeah. Comparatore, yeah. He's yeah. an Italian firefighter type, right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, the former fire chief of Buffalo Township. According to his family, Corey's final act was heroically shielding his young daughter from the gunfire. And so there's his young daughter. Looks like a nice family, you know, firefighter. Firefighter. 50-something-year-old guy. And uh, it's just such a shame, right? He he ate astray. And then Destiny, who mm-hmm. is like a leftist. Um, leftist de- debate me type guy. Debate me type. He's a little, he's like a little boy. He's like a little skinny little weasel. Um, Pussy. He used to let his wife have sex with other men. Literal and then cuck, they got, yeah. And they got divorced because of it. And mm-hmm. he has a kid, which he doesn't. Which he basically doesn't give much time to, who lives in the middle of the country, so he can go be a streamer in Miami. Ouch. Uh, he said this. If we learned anything today, I hope it's realizing the importance of principles I've stressed many times on stream before. Having a firearm means absolutely nothing if you don't spend time at the range practicing with it. Mm. I would assume the FBI is going to come talk to him, but I yeah. don't even know who who... Which FBI? Is it good FBI or bad FBI? Yep. Uh, and then, and then he was replying uh, to a tweet that mentioned um, the victim. And he said, a person in a crowd cheering for and supporting a traitor to this country caught astray. I'm so sad. Please. And then Destiny found the victim's Twitter and found like an old tweet from him. And then he said, this fucking retard that got killed at the Trump rally, fucking LMAO. So that's the same kind of thing where you do that. You're going to... You're kind of attracting a different type of crazy. Yeah. You're going to attract some people to you where it's like, yeah, fuck Trump. And like everyone who's on that camp is like, sucks and is a pussy. Yeah. But then you're also going to attract people like that, uh, the victim, who yeah. are upstanding American citizens who have you know training and weapons and care about the country. And then they see you say that, unfortunately, you probably should keep your head down or head on a swivel. Yeah, I because, would. I because would if be, you tweet stuff like that, people are going to be mad, and then they're going to if they see you in public in Miami walking around with your sandals and your little you know bathing suit. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully I, nothing. Exactly. It's it's again that that rhetoric, that crazy shit where you're you're whistling to your side, but when someone overhears it, they go, "What the fuck are you saying?" It's the same theme. You and know? the other side is actually way more capable to do violence. The yeah. people that you're whistling to are all like purple hair and on Reddit and fat and losers. The people that you're making mad are like veterans and patriots. Yeah. Um, and then there is a uh, there was a statement from the daughter. Yeah. Which is pretty sad to read. Can you read that? Yeah, it's from Allison, his daughter. It says, yesterday time stopped, and when it started again, my family and I started living a real-life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we had all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned into the most traumatizing experience uh, someone could imagine. I know the media will cover this event, and I'm going to try my best to stay away from looking at everything, especially because I've already seen and lived through it in real time. But I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about him. He was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. My sister and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer, and he would do whatever it is you needed. And if he didn't know how, he would figure out how. He could talk and make friends with anyone, which he was doing all day yesterday, and loved every minute of it. He was a man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and our members as family. The media will not tell you that he died a real-life superhero. They're not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They're not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He loved his family. He truly loved us enough to take a real bullet for us. And I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. I want nothing more than to wake up and for this to not be reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father, brother. Very sad. Yeah. And then there's a little fucking rat like Destiny who wants to get internet clicks for being a demon. Exactly. So in our description is the GoFundMe uh, for the victim. Um, go give five bucks. Go give 10 bucks. Yeah. Go give whatever. There's no ad today. That's the call to action. Uh, go give something. Uh, it's linked in the description. All right. We're going to go on to Uplifting Gold. Okay. Kind of. So we're, we have an Uplifting Gold section after all that? Yeah, we do. But it's, it's related. Yeah. All right. Well, so uh, do we want to recap anything at all? Media. Crazy, bad, Trump, protected by God, good, goaded, legendary, mm-hmm. um, leftist reaction, still retarded. Right side, right side of history. Joe Biden, still idiot. Cooked. Still cooked. Still cooked. He, he couldn't get out of it. Anything else? Any other broad strokes? They, they tried to explode Trump's head mm. on live TV, and then the exact opposite happened. Also, um, 
sorry if I'm yapping because this is kind of off script, but doesn't this all feel like it's happening really, really fast? Like we had the earliest debate in the history of presidential elections where Biden went, Meow, and then there's an assassination attempt a couple weeks later. And there's still like such a long time until the election itself. Mm -hmm. So we, we still have a lot of work to do and we can't like lose steam, you know, as Republicans, as Trump voters. And, um, the whole thing, like you can tell things go in ebbs and flows. Like for a while when Trump was doing all those court cases and was found guilty on 34 counts and he hadn't won his Supreme court case yet, where it kind of spelled out his presidential immunity. And now all these cases are crumbling. Like it looked bad for a while. It looked like it was they were using every tool they could to stop him, and they still are, obviously. But it's a long road, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so I just hope everything goes well and, you know, he, he can win because now it looks like it's almost destiny. Yeah. You know what it I mean? Is, it is destiny at this point. Uh, that was the Black Swan event, too. That was the Black Swan. So there's a different timeline right now that's really bad. Speaking of your schizo. Imagine if we had to do the show today and Trump was dead. I wouldn't even show up. We'd have to. But it would be very sad. I would can't, cry. Can't do a comedy podcast. You know, can't mm. do any funny bits. Trump? Yeah. So, hey. That, that could have really led to some bad stuff. And Barron, you guys see Barron? He's getting angrier. He saw it all. Barron 2042 or something is yeah. coming, so... All right, let's get into the uplifting goal that's all related to the event. People, uh, the first guy is, uh, had a tweet, people just casually walking around San Francisco with Trump hats. Something has changed. Definitely a vibe shift. Wow. A lot of vibe shift. A lot of celebrities are now like coming out and at least saying, hey, this was bad. Um, so unfortunately, it took Trump getting shot for them to do it. But yeah. it's good to see people being normal about this, not just automatically leftist. I think this will get a lot of uh, uh, support for him. Yeah. And then 50 Cent had a concert. And they, he had photoshopped Trump onto his body in the background. Thank you, 50. Very cool. Thank you, 50. And then he's trying to speak at the uh, RNC convention. Yeah, too. I think he might perform or something. And then here's a bombshell. Limp Biscuits bass player calls on Biden to step down. Wow. So that's big. That's powerful. Yeah, you better listen. I know. We didn't have to go that far, but he said it. It's done. <laughs> I saw someone say, uh, I'm waiting on Papa Roach's drummer before I make a decision. <laughs> like, I want to see more more perspectives, right? And then this was a good meme. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. There you that, go. And that's true. The wicked fleeing on January 6th, scared of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Trump is bold as a lion. And here's another meme that's kind of like the escalation of politics and where people are at. Can you give each one a read? Yeah, starting with 202012. Leave me alone. Allow me to explain how that violates your rights. Religion is antiquated. At the end of the day, we all care for each other. 2016. Look at the hypocrisy. Has the media always been like this? We're all Americans. At least the Constitution will protect us. And then now, history is a lie. Everything is a lie. The government wants us dead. You called me racist? LOL, nice. Live for the Lord. Live for your family and your people. I told you to leave me alone. Pretty true. Yeah, it seems like they're, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're progressing to something. And then this guy posted uh, something that I thought was pretty compelling, too, and I hope he follows through with it. I'm pressing charges on everything going on with the shooting of Donald James Trump, a representative. Charges of lawsuits and restraint over the stuff, tension, abolishing, being on the federal court of charge, talk, whatever, close rate, the deposit order, just a real adjustment. Yeah. Thank you. Did he read the fine print? <laughs> is that the fine print? Is <laughs> That's that like... the kind of schizo I get in my algorithm on Instagram now. Okay. I'm getting full schizos, like who, people who are actually schizophrenic. Yeah. And they have like one like or mm. zero likes. So it's only me watching. That's crazy. How does the algorithm know who's schizophrenic? Do they know like, do they, do they tag the video as like jumbled nonsense? Like our voice reading can't even make sense of this. Our computing can't even make sense of this. Better suggest it to Fleckus. He seems to like those ones that don't make yeah, any sense. That's what I think is going on. Okay. And let's end the whole episode with an AI video of Trump and Biden singing Chinese. Yeah, you're 
味，一人飘香。That was nice. Probably did numbers on WeChat or whatever that yeah. Chinese, uh, Chinese social like media that. is. Joe Biden can never pull off singing in Chinese. Yeah, yeah, we all right. know that. All right, all right. Now, fucking socks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. It's a weird episode. Weird episode. At least we went the right amount of time. It was a little over an hour. Okay. And also, if you're watching till the end. Of course, I did the seven day fast. Wow, I'm giving yeah, it yeah. away, a little little treat, little treat at the end. I, I did the seven day fast. Energy. I didn't drink anything except for black coffee. I ate salt, drank water, a couple of electrolytes here and there. Nothing crazy. No food for seven days. Still, right now, no food for seven days. I don't eat for another like three hours from now. A couple cookies, right? Did no you cookies, have a cookies, nothing. And then my first meal back. Um, we're gonna talk about in bonus land. All right. But yeah, I did it. It was really hard. A lot of days I was so far away from food. I felt like I was like a pirate in the water. And yeah, no like an oasis or whatever in the desert. And there's no land. Yeah. But then I stopped thinking about food so much mm -hmm. and it's good. All right. And I feel good. I did the seven day fast. Like I said, I would. I didn't let you down. Rap boy thought I couldn't do it. Proved everyone wrong. Yep. All right. See you guys at bonus land. 一片苍茫。